are tuning into the Ask Shelly Show. My name is Shelly Fan Fan. I am your host and your emotional intelligence expert. And today we are talking about flirting. Is it right? Is it wrong? We're going to have some fun because we're going to talk about some fun facts related to flirting. We're going to help this man out that says, you know what? I used to love it when my girl flirted, but now we are engaged to be married and I want it to stop. Is it fair to request behavioral changes for behaviors that you once approved? We're going to talk about that when things shift, when boundaries shift, when things change. So let me go. Let me go here. Let me see who's on. Let me see who's on. Whoever is watching, let me know who you are and where you are tuning in from. If you are tuning in, you become a part of my consultation team. I need your feedback as well. So be prepared to engage, engage, engage. Go ahead and go into the comments section. Let me know who you are and where you are tuning in from. Again, my name is Shelly Fan Fan, proud Haitian American woman right here in sunny Orlando, Florida. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, CEO, and owner of Ask Shelly Consulting. And it's an emotional intelligence firm that works with corporations providing psychoeducation that brings them to their next level. I have the privilege of working with individuals, with um, adults, married couples, adolescents, you name it, from the ages of two to 99, providing therapeutic interventions that help people to achieve the best irreplaceable versions of themselves. I have the privilege of traveling the United States of America and beyond teaching and empowering the masses, you know, bringing people to that place, that crossroad where kingdom principles, kingdom protocols and psychological principles set you free. And drum roll, please. I have the privilege and the honor to be the host of the Ask Shelly Show, where we entertain very challenging questions from our community of listeners. Today, there is a man that writes in that says, you know what? I have a fiance who is a huge flirt and I want it to stop. He even goes further, he goes so far to say that he once liked it and found it to be kind of sexy and now he wants it to stop. So we're gonna be talking about flirting today. Again, make sure you go into the comment section. Let me know who you are who you are and where you are tuning in from. Hello, Rhonda Aaron. And Rhonda is tuning in from Little Rock. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ask Shelly Show. Orlando in the house. Thank you, Sandy, for tuning in. Ashley Thomas, Arkansas in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you click share, share, share. You never know whose line of sight or whose line of hearing this recording will fall in. We are committed to empowering people in such a way where they can add tools to their wellness toolbox. Again, we are committed to assuring that our listeners are able to walk away from these lives with tools to add to their wellness toolbox, whether it's new information. Listen, new information will set you free. My mentor reminds me all the time that breakthrough is on the other side of something you do not know. So get your pen and paper ready. We are talking about flirting. We have Clayton here. Okay, here's the funny thing. I get you, but he kind of knew what he was getting into. LOL, yes. Thank you for your feedback. I cannot wait to get into this question. And Rose says, listening from Orlando. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Okay, guys, are you ready for the question? We are talking about flirting. Do you guys know that animals flirt too? I learned that when I was, you know, kind of preparing for my feedback for this question. Animals flirt too. If you knew that, let me know. Go in the, go into the comment section and let me know that you too knew this. All right. So now in the comment section, I almost forgot. In the comment section, there is a pinned comment that has a link. All you have to do is click on that link and join me right here on stage. And you can share your feedback live for our guests and all of our listeners. No one will know who you are. We won't see your face. We won't see your name. So feel free to join me right here on stage by clicking on that link. Are you ready for the question? 
Let me pull it up here. All right. And it reads, Dear Ask Shelly, my fiance is a huge flirt. I am engaged to be married to the biggest flirt to ever live. I used to love watching her in action, getting us free parking getting us fees waived into establishments with long lines that we consistently bypass because of her amazing gift of gab. I used to love watching men admire what I knew was all mine. Let me make, let me make myself clear. I think he meant to say, let me make myself clear. He says, let me make clear, but we'll go ahead and grammatically correct that. Let me make myself clear that I do not have any doubts whatsoever about her commitment to me and this relationship and our future marriage. There is no doubt in my mind she will be an amazing wife and mother. I am just getting to the point that I am deeply bothered by it. Everybody is love. Hun, baby, boppy. It just comes natural for her to refer to men that way. When I bring it to her attention, she reminds me that she interacts with women the same way, using the same terms of endearment. What is crazy is I truly believe women are turned on by it just as much as men. My fiance is gorgeous and I need her to turn it down a bit, but I feel like an a-hole asking her to change something about herself that I used to find attractive. Am I tripping? All right. My consultation team, make sure you click on the link and join me here live on stage to provide your feedback. I will be repeating the question as well. I want to hear what you guys have to say so far. Let's see. Let's see. I see Clayton. Clayton says, I say this all the time that men and women have a nasty habit of loving something while dating, but we expect them to change behavior once they kept. Oh, and Clayton goes on to say, also, what type of flirt flirtatious behavior is she engaging in? That's so good because he doesn't say, he talks about the terms of endearment, right? That she refers to men and women like poppy, baby, honey, love, but he doesn't say much else about the behavior. Alethea says, I knew animals flirted, mating rituals. It absolutely is a mating ritual. Thank you so much, Alethea, for tuning in, sis. Clayton says, oh, that sounds kind of like his own insecurities are coming up more so so then her behavior, this is good. I love my consultation team. I love you guys. We need to do this live sometime. I need each and every one of you on the platform with me. Guys, we are talking about flirting. Is there a problem with flirting? We just talked about the fact that animals flirt too. It's all part of the mating process. I am going to repeat that. We have somebody up on stage. Thank you so much for joining me here on stage. Listen, you guys can join me here on stage as well. Go into the pinned comments, click on that link, and you can share your feedback live to our listeners before all of our listeners. I'm going to repeat the question, and I'm going to bring on our guests who would like to share feedback or ask a question. It says, Dear Ash Shelley, my fiance is a huge flirt. I am engaged to be married to the biggest flirt to ever live. I used to love watching her in action. You know, I got to put myself into it, you know, a little exaggerate the question a little bit. I used to love watching her in action, getting us free parking and fees waived and into establishments with long lines that we consistently bypass because of her amazing gift of gab. I used to love watching men admire what I knew was all mine. Let me make myself clear that I do not have any doubts whatsoever about her commitment to me and this relationship and to our future marriage. There is no doubt, he says, in my mind, she will be an amazing wife and mother. I am just getting to the point that I I'm deeply bothered by it. Everybody is love and hun, baby, boppy. It just comes natural for her to refer to men that way. When I bring it to her attention, she reminds me that she interacts with women the same way, using the same terms of endearment. What is crazy is I truly believe women are turned on by it just as men. My fiance is gorgeous and I need her to turn it down a bit, but feel like an a-hole because asking her, I was about to say the curse, uh, but I feel like an a-hole asking her to change something about herself that I used to find attractive. 
Am I tripping? Is he tripping? Is he tripping? Is he tripping? All right. So we have someone joining me right here on the Ash Shelley stage. Thank you so much for tuning into the Ash Shelley show. So thank you so much for clicking that link and joining me live right here on stage. We don't know who you are. We don't see your face. You are free to share your feedback or ask your question. Well, I'm. thank you for having me on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can I hear you. you. Yes. My name is Joy. And yes, I think he's tripping. But um, also, he's entitled to his feelings. So one of the things that men and women don't do is they don't um, communicate sometimes. I think one of the issues really is communication. He has to talk to her about it and let her know his expectations. A lot of times there are unmet expectations. And so while he enjoyed it while they were dating and now that she's going to be his wife soon, I think for him to ask her to tone it down, it may not, I think he, is, is a, he has that right to ask her because she will be his wife, but he can expect her to be that way because that's, he, he, um, that's how he met her. That's how he fell in love with her. And so one of the things I think should happen is he needs to have that conversation with her to say, you know, while I um, enjoyed it for a while, it's, it is bothering me. And so maybe when we're in public, um, can you turn it down a little bit? Can you, um, and then don't use those same, term, the same um, term of endearment with those that you use in me. So hopefully she should have some nicknames for him that he knows that only he gets that attention. But when she's doing her flirting, because he's benefited from her, he can't just expect her to change, but he should let her know this makes you feel a little uncomfortable. And so that she has that understanding when we're in public and this is happening, I can say, you know, like I can turn it down because I want to respect him as my man. And I think it's vice versa. So if they have that expectation and they talk about it and they're clear, but the other thing is he did say that, he, you know, she's going to be a good wife. You know, she's going to be a good woman. He's, he's not concerned about her cheating, so he shouldn't really have a problem with it. Um, but once again, he does need to communicate to her how it's making him feel so that she can be aware so that when she's in public, she knows how to address different people in a way that will not bring embarrassment to him or make him feel less than. I love it. I want to ask you a question because people with accents are really, really smart. So do you believe that it is right for him to, I think you kind of touched on it. You first, you started with saying he is tripping. Do you think that there is an issue with wanting something that you once accepted early on in the relationship to change when the relationship is at a different stage? No, I think people change. I think that's the whole issue in the first place. When you're in a relationship, you grow, you change what you used to do when you were younger as you mature, things change. What happens though is people don't communicate how they're changing. They still expect. So when I get, if you get married at 25, the person you are at 25 is not the person you are at 35 or 45 or 50. Things change and you have to change. But if you don't communicate that with your spouse or your partner, that's where the breakdown in communication comes. And then you start getting in your feeling, you sulk, you don't share, and the next thing you know, you know the the person is saying, "Well, you're not doing the same things you used to do," and you know when that breakdown happens, then the relationship, you know, then goes on the quote unquote rocks. At that point, you don't know what changed. What changed is that you forgot to communicate what was happening with you, and then then the woman gets in her feelings, the man gets his feelings. He's saying this, she's saying they're not talking, they're not on the same page, and that's the problem with relationships to begin with. It's not so much that you want some, you know, that your actions are going to change, but you have to communicate along the way that I, while I loved this about you, I still do, but it, now I'm in this place and it's bothering me. Let's talk about this. What can we do to fix this? I love it. Thank you so much for tuning into the Ask Shelly Show and joining me here on stage. 
So it, 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 what I'm hearing her say is communication. We're going right back to that. Oh my gosh, it seems like every time we are talking about relationships, it is highlighted that what? There is a communication issue. She says, communicate how you feel. It's okay to say, you know what? I used to like this and I used to find it attractive, but right now I do need you to turn it down a little bit or turn it down all the way. One of the things that I love that she said is that people change. So, you know, who we were at 25 or when maybe who we were at the beginning of the relationship is not necessarily where we are now. And as a result of that, what I'm hearing her say is it is okay to have different expectations as the relationship develops. For those of you who are tuning in, I'd love to hear what it is you have to say let me go to our comment section. There's someone on YouTube saying, where's the link? And you know what? Oh my gosh. I don't think those on YouTube can actually see the link. So I will make sure that I fix that. You can jump onto Facebook, look for Ask Shelly, go into the comment section, click on the link, and you can join me right here on stage. Clayton says, if, if it's only terms of endearment, then I'm less offended, especially depending on her geographic location. For instance, in the South, those terms are commonplace. Thank you so much for your feedback. I love my consultation team. Ashley Thomas says, maybe he should have nipped this problem in the bud a long time ago instead of letting it prolong this far. Clayton goes on to say, oh, after your second reading, I hear something else. He doesn't have an issue with her saying it towards women. And he sounds like he finds it exciting that women like it. However, he doesn't like the double standard that she is equal opportunity. Yes, um, I thought about that too. Looks like that uh, it's okay when you do it with other women, not so okay when it's other men. Very interesting. We had a similar observation. Shelton says, I think sometimes flirty behavior is a gateway drug. It has to start somewhere. It may not go anywhere at the beginning and with every person, but the right person who receives the right flirt can turn into a big problem. And I'm telling you, Shelton, you are all up in my notes, okay? Let me say this again. Shelton says, I think sometimes flirty behavior is a gateway drug. It all has to start somewhere. It may not go anywhere at the beginning and with every person, but the right person who receives the right flirt could turn into a big problem. I love, and I want to say, I don't know if I missed this, but in case I did, Sandy Chambers Collins says, flirting is natural and it can. It can be healthy and it also can be not too healthy. I want to share some fun facts about flirting. And I'd love for you to share your feedback as I do this. And I promise I'll get into my feedback uh, for this person who asked the question. For those of you who are on, you can join me right here on stage. You can share your feedback live. You could do it um, confidently uh, with anonymity. You can turn your cameras off and join me right here. No one will know who you are or who you, they won't see your face and they won't know who you are. So feel free to join me right here on stage. So here we go. Some fun facts about flirting and then we'll go into my feedback first as i share these facts i love for you to go into the comments section and let me know what you think about these facts the why behind it if you think it's a bunch of crap the first one men tend to be more attractive to be more attracted to women that wear red lipstick and studies show that they stare at women that wear red lipstick for longer periods of time compared to other women that wear other colors. Men tend to be more attracted to women that wear red lipstick. Where is my bag? <laughs> to wear my red lipstick. Okay, so men tend to be more attracted to women that wear red lipstick. Moving on. We're talking about flirting and all that other stuff. The next one is the most popular nonverbal flirtatious behavior for a woman is what? What do you think that is? What is the most popular nonverbal flirtatious behavior that a woman displays? Drum roll, please. And the answer is uh, flipping her hair. Next. The attraction factor 
does not count when it comes to flirting. The more effective a person is with flirting, the more attraction they will draw. Ah, so they don't even have to be attractive, whatever that's defined as, right? That's pretty subjective. But it has nothing to do with the attraction factor. So you can be unattractive, whatever that is, flirt effectively and get the same attraction or draw the same attraction simply because your flirtatious game is on lock. Next, studies show that women initiate flirting 90% more than men. I'm telling you, I have to go back and fact check that. I was like, really? Really? So studies show that women initiate flirting 90% more than men, while men initiate the pursuit of a woman much more than, well, yes, much more than women. Let me say that again. Studies show that women will initiate flirting about 90% more than men, while men initiate the pursuit of a woman much more than women do in terms of pursuing a man. Next fun fact about flirting. Because men have high levels of testosterone, they are more likely to misread the flirtatious behavior of a woman and interpret it as an invitation for sex. Do you agree or disagree? This is a fun fact. Again, because men have high levels of testosterone, they are more likely to misread the flirtatious behavior of a woman and interpret it as an invitation for sex. Next, in the Victorian era, women being groomed for marriage were taught how to use kindness and their jewelry and submission, obedience, how they angle their head to effectively flirt with a potential husband. And they were taught how to effectively flirt. Oh, okay. Two more, two more, three more, three more. So these last three I got from a site called factretriever.com because I was like, ooh, I want to make sure that I, you know, go into this a little bit more. So let me read. On average, men spend 0 0.95 seconds looking at a woman's hair, 0 0.85 of a second admiring her eyes, and seven full seconds looking at what part of her body? What do you think that is? Go ahead, put it in the comments section. On average, men spend 0.95 of a second, right? 0.95 seconds looking at a woman's hair, 0.85 seconds admiring her eyes, and seven whole seconds looking at a woman's what? Drum roll, please. <gasps> Lips. Next, the most common mistake people make while flirting, according to the Social Issues Research Center, is maintaining too much eye contact. Make eye contact and let it go. Make eye contact and let it go. Make eye contact and let it go. All right. And the last, this is so funny to me. So there are top scents that men are attracted to and it increases their chances of flirting when they smell it. Of these top scents, guess what's among the list? Not your mango lotion. <laughs> Not your bamboo from Gucci, right? Is it from Gucci? Does bam? Yeah, Gucci makes bamboo, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So that among the list of top scents that cause men to flirt is the scent of fried food. Fried food. I promise. I read that. Don't, don't quote me. I'm just letting you know what I read. All right. So let me see what you guys have to say here. My consultation team and Sandy Chambers Collins says also her flirting with everyone should be different than when she is doing it with him. Also, maybe he should begin flirting himself so long as they have boundaries and don't cross those lines. And I'm so happy that you said that. One of the things that our guest said was, make sure that you have terms of endearment that's specific to him. I forgot to mention that. I thought that was so good, right? So if you're calling everybody, hun, you're calling the guy at 7-Eleven, Foppy, you're, you're, you're the, the, the man that changed your oil, baby, you may want to assure that you have different terms of endearment 
for the man that you love. Let's see. And Sandy Chambers Collins says, new facts. I need some red. <laughs> and I thank you so much for participating. Sandy says, eye contact. Sandy Latour says, hmm, let me stock up on some red lipstick. Yes. And Shelton says, the look. Tati says, hi, from Port Charlotte, Florida. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sandy Chambers Collins says, I think I need to step up my game. LOL. We all do. When I read that, I was like, fried food? That's all I have to do is just fry some fish and go to a a club or a lounge just smell like some fried food could be true sometimes women flirt and not realize they are flirting very very true when we talked about body parts sandy said breast or butt sandy latour said twins i think she meant the breast and martine says breast or butt and martine says what lips it was lips it was lips. Rose said natural scent for the top scents that, that draw men to flirt. One of those scents was fried food. There were others on the list. There were others on the list. Sandy says, I'm taking notes. And Martine says, fried food, LOL. Yes, I was laughing too. Now, let us give this man his feedback so we can go about our Tuesday. Now, I want us to look at behavior. All right, let's talk about behavior. There are four functions of behavior. These are four functions, four reasons why we behave. We've talked about it here on the Ask Shelly show before. So if you refer to some of your back notes, those of you who are students, you will remember that we talked about that there are four functions of behavior, four reasons why we behave four reasons why behavior happens, right? So behavior happens for attention. Behavior happens for avoidance. Behavior happens for attainment of something, possibly tangible, but also other things such as power and control. Behavior happens because it feels good. Most of the time when flirting is done, it is done for attention or it is done to attain something such as sex a date, a husband, just to name a few. So what happens, so this is what, so now we know that most of the time when flirting behavior is displayed, when that is exhibited, we're mostly looking at someone who is wanting attention or wanting to attain something from the person that they are flirting with. That something could be a commitment as well. What happens directly after a behavior, right? The things that happen directly after behavior will determine if the behavior is strengthened or weakened. So basically, if I am successful with getting attention or something that I want as a result of flirting, the chances of me doing it again is very high. The reason why this is important is because when couples come in about a non-preferred behavior that is causing issues in their relationship, or something that their loved one is engaging in. Part of the assessment process is for me to determine why it is happening, how frequent is it happening, what is the duration of those episodes, what is the intensity of those behavioral episodes, how has it been reinforced, and what are some adaptable, appropriate, and productive replacement behaviors that we can focus on increasing. Now, of course, there are other things that I assess like thought patterns and emotional issues that may be involved, right? Like assessing her self-esteem and her satisfaction in the relationship, et cetera. A lot of the times when we're looking at women that are really focused on attention seeking and getting that attention on, you know, no matter the lengths <laughs> that they have to go to to get that attention, we really have to focus on the, you know, their self esteem, their self confidence. Why is it that they have this void, this void that will never ever be filled? They can get attention every day, all times of the day. They can do whatever, stand on the chandelier, upside down, whatever, go to a club with your panties on, whatever it is, and you will never ever fill that void because most of the time, 
with significant attention seeking behavior, it's something much deeper, right? So I understand that there's all different types of ways, right? Methods that we can take to really analyze the why when it comes to this behavioral pattern. But I want to focus on a more behavioral perspective because this is a behavior that you are wanting to extinguish, right? And this is a behavior that is heavily reinforced. And not only is it heavily reinforced by men, it, it's been heavily reinforced by women. And she's, be, she's been able to possibly talk her way out of tickets and talk your way into you know, skipping lines and all these things that you talked about. But in addition to that reinforcement, that positive reinforcement, that reward includes your approval and your attention. So I'm happy that you are taking responsibility for being a part of that reinforcement, that you acknowledge it by saying, am I tripping? Is it right for me to even want this? I hear you. I hear that acknowledgement. Is it impossible to change this behavior? And the answer is no. Will it be challenging? Absolutely. Especially if that behavior is stored in her auto zone. Right. If it's stored in her auto zone, this is just an automatic way that she responds. Bringing it to her attention first is required and then working on uh, working on learning different ways to get attention, different ways to get what she wants, different ways in responding to men, different ways to responding to women. So there is it is possible. And that comes with time. It comes with treatment, it comes with uh, having a provider that's trained on behavior modification principles to assist. So let me bring it to the main issue at hand. And that is your specific question. What I'm hearing is, is it okay to desire behavior change for something you once celebrated? And my answer is, it's not a matter of it being okay or not. It is what it is. Should you keep your mouth shut about something you are uncomfortable with because you once accepted it and now you do not? And the answer is absolutely no. I would say that ensuring you guys are on the same playing field, right, is more of a concern than anything else. Let's make sure that we are on the same playing field, that if you, accept, if you expect her to turn it down a little bit, I'm not, you didn't say anything about yourself, but that you would be willing to turn it down as well. That the same behavioral change that you want and the commitment that you want her to have to address it, that she would be just as committed to addressing any behavioral issues or changes that she is expecting of you. An equal playing field is a major, not necessarily a major concern, but something that I feel is more of a concentration or area of concentration. So making sure you guys are on an equal playing field that we are not rewarding a double standard here because that is not going to happen on this show check yourself if there is but if you are equally willing to address those behavioral change that she may want then great fair or unfair it is very common that couples reset their boundaries before marriage it may sound unfair but it is what it is, right? And so this is exactly what's happening. You guys were dating, I don't know for how long, now you guys are about to get married and you want to reset some boundaries and that is okay. I want to make sure that I say this super quick. Flirting is a part of the intimacy spectrum, right? Remember we talked about sex zones. So uh, flirting is a part of the intimacy spectrum spectrum that I teach with married and exclusively dating couples. It is a part of the warm zone out of the three sex zones that we've talked about right here on the Ash Shelley show. That's the cold zone, the warm zone, and the hot zone. In the warm zone, we teach couples the importance of flirting to really contribute to the intimacy and the sexual gratification. Notice I said that in two different ways in their marriages, right? So when we start to serve slices, listen to what I'm saying now. Maybe I'm old school. Am I old school? Maybe I am. When we start to serve slices of what belongs to our exclusive partners to others, we begin to enter a danger zone. So flirting generally communicates some type of interest. And when done in a playful manner or just an attention seeking manner with no attempt to go further, understand this, okay? Because I understand that that flirt flirting may happen in 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 with no intention to go further than that interaction that playful flirtatious interaction but you do not always know the intention of others 
You do not always know the cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs potential of other people. <laughs> you may not know what their emotional injury is. You may not know what their emotional wounds are or their relationship wounds or their self-esteem issues. Therefore, you may not necessarily be clear on how the other party is receiving your subtle advances. I'm talking to the woman and anybody else who's a flirt here and listening to this live. So again, you may not necessarily be very clear or knowledgeable of how the other party is receiving your subtle advances. Communication is two things, two-way street, expressive and receptive. And what you are communicating expressively may not be what they are receiving, right? Based on their their issues, their distorted thinking, um, their distorted perceptions, you just never know. As a result of that, <laughs> when you ask, sir, am I tripping? My response to that is you are not tripping. What you are experiencing is a change of boundaries, a change of expectations as your relationship develops into higher levels of commitment. I do recommend premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is a really good way of resetting those boundaries talking about expectations, being very honest about those expectations that you have of the other person, being uh, honest about unmet expectations, doing that in a control setting, a non-judgmental setting with someone who is trained to work that conflict out is super, super powerful. And with you guys entering into this lifelong exclusive partnership with one another, I recommend premarital counseling. I think that's a great way to say, you know what? We need to establish a new norm for our relationship and there's nothing wrong with that. You are not tripping. Just make sure that you guys are on an even playing field and that we are not upholding any double standards in your relationship. Having said that, Sandy Chambers Collins says, Bath and Body's new fragrance, fried chicken. <laughs> I will not be surprised. Let's share, 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 share this live so people can know that that idea came from Sandy Chambers Collins right here live on the Ash Shelley Show so you can get some rights to the profit <laughs> so you can have some shares for yourself. Isn't that, why do you guys think that is? Can you talk to me real quick? We're going to close, but I want to, why do you think that is? I see that there are people here um, on stage. If you want to speak, you could just go into the private chat and say, bring me on. Um, I, what is it? Why fried food? Do you guys, what, what are you guys, what are your thoughts on that? Why fried food? For those of you who are tuning in late, we were going over some um, fun facts about flirting and we read that uh, there are certain scents that increases the chances that a man will flirt with a woman. And there's there's a list of the scents, but among the top scents was fried food. And so I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Sandy says food. Okay, so it's just that food is, you know, I didn't know that just fried food was an aphrodisiac. I guess so. Is it because you assume that the person knows how to cook or the, oh, she adds, she says, Food. And then she writes, a way to a man's heart is food. I get it. All right. Well, now we know. I was like, okay, among the top scents that would cause men to flirt is the scent of fried food. Sandy Chambers Collins says, I think that men are attracted to women who can cook. Okay. Well, you know what? Don't shower after frying fish and go to that cigar bar and expect to meet your husband. That is not my recommendation. No one is going to go back and say this is the feedback that they got from the Ash Shelley show. So let's rewind and scratch that out. Please <laughs> do not replay that part. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into the Ash Shelley show. I think we gave this man some great feedback. You're not tripping. Things are changing, values are shifting, boundaries are shifting, 
as they should as you enter into a lifelong exclusive partnership with the woman that you love. I love the fact that you have acknowledged that you know what, yes, I used to love it and now I have an issue with it. I know that it may sound unfair, but let's do this for the sake, for the life, for the health of our marriage. And I think that is okay. Make sure that you are equally committed to engaging in any behavioral changes and being actively committed to addressing her unmet expectations as well. We are not going to reward or reinforce any double standards here on the Ask Shelly Show. So to all of my consultants for today, thank you so much for tuning in as we talked about flirting. And I have Sandy Chambers Collins, our last comment of the day. Fried foods are comfort foods also. When you are happy or sad, what people turn to generally. Yeah. You know what, Sandy? She says, is he insecure all of a sudden? And I'm happy that you wrote that because when I first read it, and this is what makes it so hard. I really want, I wonder if people would be bold enough to come here live, right? And share their questions like super live so we can ask questions and ask clarifying questions because I want to know that too, Sandy. What changed? Did something change that caused you to reset those boundaries? That's so good. You must be a therapist, right? What, you know, because we're... He loved it. He was like, oh, I used to love watching her flirt and move because I knew that it was coming home with me and something has shifted. And, you know, like I said, sometimes boundaries are reset, expectations shift, you're getting more serious, you're talking about marriage. This woman is going to be your wife. I'm going to say this because I think it was Clayton that said this earlier, like it's not fair for things to change, right? After marriage, I think something something to that nature, I may have misquoted him, excuse me if I did. But I wanna say though, that a lot of the times when couples come in for intimacy coaching, they will say that things significantly change after marriage. That the things that were okay, and I hear this a lot from women, that it was okay for me to do this and do this and spread that and do this and put my head here and mouth here. And then when we got married and I was his wife and became a mom, it was like, no more that. I don't want your mouth there. I don't want your head there. Don't want your hands there. Turn off the video cameras, right? So I have heard that things have changed and, and not so much that not in a way that promoted more health, but actually promoted hostility and resentment. Like we used to do this and we used to do that and we don't do it anymore. And so again, you know, sometimes those changes can contribute to the strength of the relationship and those boundaries could be healthy. And I think sometimes those changes can really cause the other person to feel like this is unfair. Why, why did things have to change? And I think that in premarital counseling, in therapy, you could really find a good medium, right? That compromise that would continue to strengthen and contribute to the intimacy of your relationship that causes lifelong attachment and bonding. Yeah. All right. So guess what? This is why I logged in late because I want my consultation team to hear this. And this is what happens when you are juggling so much. So my son is on his way to Dr. Wendy. Wendy Wardlaw, for those of you who do not know her, she's an amazing dentist, he's on his way. And we're expecting that she, he may have to have his teeth, his wisdom teeth, um, emergency, uh, uh, emergency removal of his wisdom teeth. So I am going to be heading out to uh, Winter Garden where her office is, Stony Brook Dental, shout out to Stony Brook Dental and the amazing Dr. Wendy. So I am going to leave you guys, but I hope and pray that you guys are empowered, that you were able to add some tools to your wellness toolbox. I pray that this uh, live brought some new information that would trigger some behavioral changes that continue to bring you closer to irreplaceable versions of yourself. If you heard anything today that made you feel like, oh boy, really? attention-seeking behavior. Is that me? Do I do that?
If you're feeling like there's something that you heard today that made you feel like you need more support, feel free to email info at ashley.com. If you have a challenging question, you may think like, no, this is a boring question. This is not, no one's going to want to, no, send in your challenging question. You can email them to info at ashley.com. Visit with me at www.ashley.com. You could book me for speaking engagements there. You could book me to be your hostess. You can book a free consultation. Actually, I don't know if they're free anymore, but anyway, you'll know once you go on my website, you can book a consultation with me or any one of our therapists that belong to our emotional intelligence firm. And you can submit your challenging questions with anonymity on www dot ashshelly.com as well. For those of you who want access to my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel, Ash Shelly, and you can subscribe, click that bell so you are notified when live uh, new videos are uploaded to my YouTube channel. So for those of you who are still watching, those of you who are catching the replay, I want to thank each and every one of you for being committed to your journey of self-development. Your only competition is who you were yesterday. We were all given the power and the capacity to influence outcomes in the earth. We could use our words to manifest on, in our favor. We can operate in behavioral patterns that attract the most favorable life outcomes. We are a powerful people. And it starts with maximizing your emotional intelligence so that you can learn why you do the things that you do, why you think the way that you think, why you respond the way that you respond, why do you go through his phone when he's sleeping, right? Why are you so jealous? Why am I so, why, why do I lack confidence? All those things, it's important to know that when you can dis, that you can uproot, you can uproot the reasons why you are not functioning at peak performance as a human being. And that's what this show is about. This show is about, you know, sharing these challenging questions in the lives of the people who listen so that you can learn something new. So again, I appreciate your shares, your continued support of the Ask Shelley Show. And remember, just be great. Be great. You owe the world you. You owe us you. You are a gift to this world. You are the only one of your kind. So remember that you are an answer to a world problem and you are a gift to this world. So give it. We are waiting for you. Blessings.